In half an hour's time, the first part of a two-part series as part of another series, if you get, get my drift. Star Sound Special is the overall title, and it's looking at the work of Hollywood's musical directors. And this week we start off, as I say, a two-part look at the work in words and music of Henry Mancini. I got there in the end. What have we got before that? Well, it's nearly three minutes past ten now. You're listening to Radio 2. <laughs> Some of these days, March the 18th, the panel game about the events of this day in years gone by. In the chair, David Hamilton. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Some of These Days for March the 18th, 1985, the 20th anniversary of man's first walk in space. Colonel Alexei Leonov did the honors back in 1965, stepping outside of his craft to experience the exhilarating freedom of the universe. Must be something like that in a Sinclair C5. <laughs> well, that's what some of these days is all about, a light-hearted look back at the events of March the 18th. Before we go any further, let me introduce you to the teams. On my right, it's June Whitfield and Lance Percival. <laughs> And they are doing battle tonight with Sheila Stiefel and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> Lance, were you walking in space by any chance on March the 18th? No, no, I was looking up there. Uh, and on another March the 18th, uh, much nearer, in fact, last year, March the 18th, I was decorating the house that I'm now living in, and I got to the stage where I was hanging up the pictures and I discovered from some program, you can now get these metal scanners that you put up against the wall and they show you where a pipe is, you know. So before we put the nail in, we've got this little scanner thing and run it up and down the wall and the red light comes on when you're across a pipe and we run along and see the pipe's not there, we run down here, no pipe. So we decide, right, this is the point. So I bang a nail in and water came straight out the wall. <laughs> so I remember at March the 18th for that. <laughs> Now, Leslie, it may be something else about a March the 18th. No, it was, a, it, was, it was the 18th of March. It was a long time ago. It was in the 50s, and I was in a play called For Better, For Worse, and, and uh, I found this wonderful bit of business at the end of the first act, which was I rushed in through the door, and my wife, played by Geraldine McEwen, had put a, a clothes horse in front of the door, and I went right over the top of the clothes horse and finished up in practically in the orchestra pit. Brought the house down, fabulous bit of business. Everybody was very pleased. But I frequently hurt myself, and I was frequently going off to St. Mary's Paddington for this or that. And on this particular, March the 18th, I remember it very well. And I, this terrible, it was a very bad fall, and I was shipped quickly off to Paddington. And this um, very sweet Indian doctor had a look at me, and he said, yeah, he's, mm, very, he said, you damaged your, um, your, your um, radius and various other things. He said, what, what, um, how, did you, how did you do this? So I said, well, I fell over a clothes horse. So he gave me a long look, and uh, he looked at my card, and he saw the various entries that I'd been going there, two or three, four, five entries, and uh, all of them are where I've fallen over a clothes horse. <laughs> <laughs> So he said, D -d -d -do, why, why do you do this? I said, well, I, I fall over a clothes horse six days a week <laughs> and twice on Wednesdays and Saturdays. <laughs> That's the end of the story. <laughs> Fortunately, no clothes horses here tonight. Well, we'll press on with the game, and the first round is all about the headline-making events of March the 18th. We call it What's in the Daily News. As ever, it's two points for a correct answer and one for a bonus. Sheila. Yes. It was 25 years ago today that British Rail did something for the last time. What was it that was unveiled in Swindon? Uh, I thought you were going to say the last thing they did was clean their windows. <laughs> 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 what did they unveil? Um, um, steam stopped. Yes, you're getting closer all the time. Uh, they, they opened an exhibition and they started remember electrifying the, things. Remember, it was the last, the last time, and you're getting very close to it. 
So what could it be? The last time a, a choo-choo train went with puffing things. Well, I haven't actually got choo-choo train and puff puffs down here, but I've got... I Britain's, was very young at the time. I've know. got Britain's last steam locomotive to be built by British Railways. It was the Evening Star, but I think that's good enough. Don't think it's the last choo-choo train and puff puffs. What, a, what an intellectual panel we have here tonight. <laughs> Do you believe it? It should be on Radio 4. Now, while you're thinking uh, fond childhood memories of steam trains, Lance, we'll yeah. go back uh, just a little beyond that to 1834. Oh, six, wow. uh, <laughs> even before Jimmy Young's time, uh, six farm workers were sentenced to transportation to Australia today for forming a branch of the Labourers' Union near Dorchester. Yeah. How do we know them better? They're well, known as the Toll Puddlers. Yes, they were the Toll Puddle Martyrs. That's right. No, I have Leslie. to tell you, that I've seen, I seem to be very knowledgeable there. My sister used to live one mile down the road. That's the only reason I know the answer there. <laughs> and, and, of course, she was born on March the 18th. Yes. Now, <laughs> Leslie, things were hotting up in the North Sea today. I in, don't think uh, you're going to hot 19, up here, really. <laughs> In 1973, when an Icelandic ship fired two shots across the bows of the British tug Statesman. What was the dispute? The dispute? Yes. Well, I know the captain wasn't getting on well with the first mate, but... Uh, <laughs> this is true. I'm sure the dispute had something to do with um, the sea. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. what's in the sea? I mean, what's in the sea? Fish? Yes, yes, you're getting closer to it. might be yeah. some kind of dispute about fishing rights. Possibly. Well, I want to, I want to, I'm looking for, there's a specific name of what it was. Uh, if you, if you can't give it to me, Leslie, I shall have to throw it open to uh, the other panel here. Really? Yeah. No? Oh, wow. If you can give me the actual name of what it was. Haddock. It was known as... <laughs> well, try another fish and you might get closer. You should know by now. Come on. Herrings. Oh, herrings, yes. What? Herrings. Oh, what about the other team? Cod. Well, cod. Leslie and The Jim. Cod War. Cod. Ah, the, the Cod, cod war. war. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> Yes, as Leslie Phillips correctly said, it was the Cod War as opposed to the Cod Peace. <laughs> now, June, it was an important day for mm. somewhere which became the 50th state of the USA today in 1959. So, where? Uh, grass skirt land. Yes. Um, was it Hawaii? It was Hawaii. Hawaii! moment we have June Whitfield appearing in her grass skirt and Lance Percival chasing her with a lawnmower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now Sheila and Leslie I uh, want you to have a listen to this. Throughout the night she's been rolling and pounding on the Seven Stones rocks and as the wind freshened this morning she was slipping slowly but perceptibly deeper in the water. Her foredeck is now awash. The starboard handrail was underwater at high tide. 1967 was the year when a tanker was wrecked today on the Cornish coast, spilling 30,000 tonnes of crude oil. And Sheba and Leslie, can you remember the name of the ship? Well, it can't be HMS Trout Bridge, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> or it could. I mean, um, no, I can't. Can you show? No, I can't. I'm ashamed to say. 1967. What about June and Love? My uh, friend can. Yes. Uh, June, you say it. You say it. Well, I'll say it, but you wrote it, yes. The Torrey Canyon. Yes, the Torrey Canyon. Well done, June. <laughs> so, bonus point there for June and Lance, and for you to listen to a report on fires that were raging today down under. The bushfires are the worst to hit Australia for many years. Hundreds of square miles have been destroyed and several townships wiped out. It's thought about 100 homes and several schools have been burned in South Australia and another 80 houses in Victoria. Now, over 70 people were killed and 350,000 farm animals died. But were the bushfires in South Australia one, two, or three years ago? <laughs> I'll have a go at two. And you're right. Yes, it was 1983. <laughs> so at the end of a lively first round, and a, certainly an intellectual one, we have Sheila and Leslie with four points, June and Lance in the lead with six. Now, a short round of questions I think you'll enjoy about theatre, radio, TV and film. That's entertainment. However, Sheila, in the light of the first question, that title is debatable. <laughs> Something was broadcast for the first time today in 1947, and this is what it sounded like. 
This is the first of a series of broadcasts in which government and opposition speakers will give you their views on controversial subjects. Tonight, however, I'm going to speak to you rather from the national and the party political view. Now, that was the cue for people all over Britain to get up and make a cup of tea. That, in fact, was Clement Attlee. What was it that was broadcast for the first time today in 1947? Ooh. Is it a program name? It like is a, Panorama, it is, for instance? It is a type of program. A type of program. Yeah. And uh, Jim Whitfield wrote the answer down. Before. Well, Wait, once again, I think we'll throw this one over because I think the others do have the answer. I do you? don't. Is she it called This Week in London? No. What I'll tell you what it was. The it first was. party political broadcast? Yes, it was the first party political broadcast. Well, um, They're always good for a laugh, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got to. You said that was round about entertainment. Yeah. No, I did say. <laughs> I, I, I did say, Sheila, that in the case of the first one, I it was debatable. Was yes, no. yeah. Debatable June. was good. I missed that. Debatable, yes. Yeah. Yeah. June, there were ructions yeah. in progress today in 1983 at troubled TVAM. Someone hadn't poisoned Roland Rat, but who was it that resigned as chairman of the company today? Ah, um, a bird. It was, wasn't it? It was, um, you know, the chap. Thingy. Uh, <laughs> thingy. Yes, Not Jay. Uh, Peter. Peter, Peter Jay. Peter Jay. Right, yes, it was Peter Jay. <laughs> After that, the company changed its name to TV Mayhem. Now, Leslie, today yes. marks the birthday of screen star Robert Donat, star of uh, such successes as Goodbye Mr. Chips, and the magic box. But can you tell me, within 10 years, the year of his birth? Uh, within 10 years, I would be guessing, of course, but I would say 1910. Well, I'll take that because it was 1905, 1905. <laughs> Finally, in this round, Lance, at the Central Criminal Court, not a venue I'm sure you're familiar with oh, in right. any way, uh, but uh, today in 1982, a private indecency prosecution brought by Mrs. Mary Whitehouse came to an end, and here's a clue. It's a play set in, in the 6th century BC during the, Julian, the first Julian invasion of Britain and is set in the forest just north of the Thames. Now, from that, you should be able to tell me the title of the play that was being prosecuted. Uh... June's not quite sure, nor am I, but I, we think it's either the Roman centurions or the centurions. Well, the Romans uh, is right. It was not called the Roman the soldiers or the Roman... The Romans... Romans in Britain. The Romans in Britain. Oh, yes, Britain. very good. Very well done. Late in the third row. Very good. Well, I doubt very much if our contestants have appeared in that, but I can tell you that at the end of that round, we have uh, Sheila and Leslie on six points and June and Lance on 11. Ah. Oh. Can I ask you some questions now about personalities for whom March the 18th is or was a significant date? And Leslie, your question mm. is about Britain's fireest snooker star. He was born today in 1949, but who is this whirlwind of the Green Bays? Well, it must be Steve, mustn't it? Steve. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> it's from the North or Island, you know. Well, it must be the other one, then. It must be <laughs> Hurricane Higgins. Yes, Alex Higgins. Lance, 1982 was the year, and today was the day, when Metropolitan Police Commissioner Sir David McNee announced his retirement. Who was his successor? Well, it wasn't uh, the Radial Tower fellow, because he'd gone already. Um, so it must have been a new man. Yeah. Namely... Uh, uh, Sir Kenneth Newman, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> Sheila, let me take you back 401 years to 1584. I know you'll love this. A chap by the name of Ivan Vasilievich died today. I don't suppose you were personally acquainted in any way, but can you tell me how he is better known? The it, Terrible it, Man. It was Ivan the Terrible, the Tsar of Russia. Ah. Yes. Well done. <laughs> June, a slightly more recent history for you. King Farouk died today in exile in 1965. Which country had he ruled from 1936 to 1952? Egypt. Egypt, right, yes. <laughs> With my friend. <laughs> Leslie, the lady who was to become London's first female mayor was admitted to the City of London Court of Aldermen today in 1975. She was the first lady there too. Can you tell me who? 
Um, no, I know her husband quite well, but I um, can't think of her name. <laughs> her name escapes me. Is it, uh, was it Bessie something? Bessie? No. Bessie Braddock? No, no, it wasn't. No, no. <laughs> no. What about the other team? No, I don't know. <laughs> the idea? No. Well, uh, it was Lady Donaldson. Oh, oh yeah, Lady Donaldson. Lady Donaldson. <laughs> well, Lance, we have an easier... We have an easier one for you. We'd like to picture these questions, right? Name the British motorcyclist who rode to victory in the Venezuelan Grand Prix today in 1981. Well, the only British motorcyclist I know is Barry Sheen. That's right, Barry Sheen. Oh, yes. Who has uh, just announced he's his retirement, as he knows. He's now driving trucks around. Like, like, is he? Uh, yeah. And he's a dad, too, isn't he? He's a new, recently a dad. Yes, baby. yes. Well, he's, he, get, he gets a few days off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, to finish the round, a couple of political questions. And firstly, for you, Sheila, <laughs> three funny. years ago, this 97-year-old peer resigned the Labour whip in protest at the left wing of the party. He now sits as an independent. Who? Oh, is it just Manish Shinwar? It, it is, Lord Shinwar, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> a wonderful man. Uh, Lord Shinwell. Anybody here met Lord Shinwell? No, I'd love to. I think he's wonderful. Well, we'll see if we can arrange it for you. Thank Shinwell. you. <laughs> now, June, it was the birthday today in 1869 of Britain's Prime Minister from 1937 to 1940. Who was Vietnam? That, that must have been uh, Neville Chamberlain. Yes, it was Neville Chamberlain, yes. End of that round, and we have Sheila and Leslie, 12 points. June and Lance still in the lead with 19. <laughs> Once again, we're on to the music round, as ever titled, I Remember It Well. Uh, that remains to be seen, of course, as I asked Lance to identify this singer and actor who was born today in 1939. You can never stop me loving you. You can never stop the way that my heart's beating to. You can never stop me loving you. That's one thing you never do. You well, can never stop me loving you. Does that voice sound familiar? Um, no, he's not that old. He's not that old, no. Now, the, um, no? who else do we know? I don't know anybody. Well, let's Why throw it open to, um... The other team, what do you think? No. Uh, very embarrassed and defeated. Idea? By I'm afraid we're awfully yeah. defeated here. Yes. Yeah. Well, obviously, nobody here is very familiar with Kenny Lynch. Oh, yes. Kenny Lynch, yeah. Yeah. never forgive us. Yeah. Now, Sheila, I don't know the, uh, the weight of our next answer, but it is something sizable. Famous for the Bat Out of Hell album, his song, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, was released today in 1978. So, who is he? Big chap. Yes. Bernie Bresnell. Oh. No, no, no. Big chap. A big chap <laughs> with an unusual name. <laughs> well, they're, they're look at look at on the other it's side. Sheila's looking very perplexed yes, well, on radio. Gone, they must be very bright. You must hear June's answer first. <laughs> June has an answer. No, no, no I, I, I wondered you... if it might be Christopher Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying chap? No. Um, I was going to try. Well, he's a bit too far off. I'm saying Long it's John. It's not Humperdinck. Is it? Long John Baldwin. No, he's not big that way. He's big. That he's way. wide. Yeah. Harry Seacombe. No, I'm going to go around with a caftan, not him. Not the singing tent, Demis Roussos. No, it no, was no. Meatloaf. Who? Who? Meat? <laughs> Meatloaf. Pretty name, isn't it? Yes. yes. Which, which is his Christian name, Meat or Loaf? <laughs> <laughs> well, June, since you're not very acquainted with uh, oh, Meatloaf. Yes. Just the sandwich in the middle. <laughs> June, as you're not very acquainted with Meatloaf, I have another wonderful name for you. I'm now going to take you to Prattville. Pardon? Um, <laughs> a place called Prattville, Alabama. Uh, there yeah, today in 19, to 1941, you would have uh, coincided with the birth of this rhythm and blues star. his big hit records it was called at the midnight hour in the midnight hour so who is he i think he's absolutely fantastic but i'm afraid i don't know i have to say 
Uh, Lance, you're a musical man. You should yes, I, I should know that one. I know it perfectly well, but I just can't remember it at this very moment. And even my friend in the audience can't remember it either. No. So. Well, he, he also has a very unusual surname. What if Leslie and Sheila... It can't, be, it can't be Stevie Wonder, can it? No. no, no it's not, not Stevie Wonder. Dink. Is no, it? No, no. I'll tell you who it was. It was Wilson Pickett. Me Wilson Pickett, yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, I thought he rode horses. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Prime Minister. <laughs> well, what a high-scoring round this is after today. Um, at the top of the charts today, Leslie. I know huh? you're going you're to come up with a winner. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. In 1966, at the top of the charts on this day, we find the song, The Sun Ain't Gonna Shine Anymore. Well, not if the Daily Mirror has its way. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Which nominally related group had put that song in the number one position? The song, The Sun Ain't Gonna Shine Anymore. It's the it's some brothers. Yes, uh, yeah. it is. I remember, not yeah. the Everly brothers. No. It's the other brothers. The, yeah. The, the, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. well, Thank you. The, 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 the what's name brothers, you know, the... Um, the Walker brothers. The Walker, the Walker brothers. brothers. <laughs> With absolutely no help at all from the audience, <laughs> Leslie Phillips does it again. You I wish you would. W somewhere. Now, Lance, in the pole yeah. position just four years ago were the group Roxy Music with Jealous Guy. Who is their distinctive lead singer? Uh, it's the uh, it's the Woolwich Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> Could Brian. be related. Brian. Brian Ferry, right. Yeah. Now, the name Barry Wilson may not mean a lot to you, Sheila, but this drummer was born today in 1947. He went on to form the group Procol Harum, who had this hit in 1967, which you should recognize. No, I want the name. I want the name of the tune. Oh well, I knew that. I was worrying about the, the whiter shade of pale. Yes, wonderful record, wasn't it? Whiter shade of pale. Wasn't that? <laughs> June, who was uh, at the top of the charts 21 years ago with anyone who had a heart? And oh, I do know that. Of course, I do. Scylla. Surprise, Scylla? surprise. Anyone yes, it was Scylla Black. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. And Leslie, finally in this round, I want yes. you to identify the group who earned a gold record today in 1974 for their seventh album and went on to great success with this later single. It was called if you leave. I got me excited now. when they went woo 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 woo. <laughs> but then I'm afraid I didn't quite make it. I'll give I'll give you I'll give you a little clue. Will you? Oh, thank yeah. you, David. Um, think of a think of a windy city. A windy city. A windy city. Windy city. <laughs> windy city. A famous windy city. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> I didn't hear that when you said <laughs> when you said Chicago. I didn't hear it. <laughs> Chicago, right? Yes. Yeah, well <laughs> how how kind of the Leslie Phillips fan club to turn up here? <laughs> and with Thank a little goodness, help... I got some fans. <laughs> I'd have no points otherwise. Well, Leslie, with a little help from your friends there, you and Sheila now have eighteen points, and you're catching up because June and Lance have twenty-three. <laughs> And the thrilling climax to our little contest is a round of quick-fire questions. So fingers on the bells and buzzers, please, teams. And the first one to answer gets a crack at it. The London to Paris telephone service was inaugurated today. How long ago? And I'll give you 15 years each way. Very generous. <laughs> I thought nobody wanted to have a go at it. <laughs> Leslie. Oh, 1906. You're just in there, because in fact it was 1891, so 1906 is the last year you could have had. 
England beat Scotland for the Calcutta Cup today in 1967, but what's the sport? Lance. Rugby Union. Rugby Union, right. The US launched Apollo 10 from Cape Kennedy for a rehearsal of the moon landing today. Was it in 1967, 1969, or 1972? Lance. I think it was 72. No. <laughs> Leslie. 1967. No. no. <laughs> June. 1969. Oh, Brilliant. 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 <laughs> Uh, a certain weather phenomenon hit the southern central United States today in 1925. It was the most violent of its kind ever recorded. What was it? Lance. Bernard Manning arrived in town. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hurricane, was it? No, it wasn't, no, it wasn't a hurricane. No, I was talking about Higgins, and Hurricane Higgins witnessed Anybody this else? tornado. It oh. was, well, I, we'll give Lance another crack. It was a tornado, yes. Tornado. Ooh. Ooh. Half a point. So, at the end of the close-fought battle, the scores are thus. We have Sheila and Leslie with 19 points. June and Lance are this week's winners with 25 points. Oh. <laughs> so, with uh, very great thanks to two brave panels, it only remains for me to tell you that today, five years ago, was the day when actor Anthony Hopkins turned down a nude scene with Bo Derek in the film A Change of Seasons. I just can't do it. I don't relish that kind of thing at all, he said. I wonder if the job's still open. If so, we may have a few vacancies here tonight and a few people volunteering. Thank you. Good night. Join us again next week. Bye-bye. That was Some of These Days, March the 18th. In the chair was David Hamilton. On the panel, Sheila Stiefel, June Whitfield, Lance Percival and Leslie Phillips. Questions set by Rob Metcalf and produced by Paul Spencer.